Hey, in this video, let's compare SQL to Postgres to MongoDB read and write database speed. And I know a lot of people always say this, but the results really weren't what I was expecting. So let's get into it. Now, if you take a look at the database environment variables, we have one for NoSQL, one for SQL, one for Postgres. So let's connect the NoSQL one. Let's go into here and then say database URL NoSQL, and that should work. So we can go into the node and then yarn Prisma DB push. So essentially this means if you've never worked with Prisma, that the schema we have defined here, this model is going to be pushed into our NoSQL database. And then we also want to generate that so we can work with it here in the Prisma client. So that means we will get really convenient. Uh, oops, that was not the one I wanted to do. Uh, let, let me restart the TypeScript server. And that means we get really convenient type uh, validation. So right here I can use control and spacebar and you can see everything that we have on our Prisma object. And now we can access the IDC, which is the model we've just created. And essentially we're just making a single write to the database and logging out the time with console.time and let's see what happens. So everything we need to provide for this data to be added is the name because the ID will be generated automatically. So if we run yarn dev, start up the local development server and then hit the button, this API route is going to get called because we've got the DB request on click. This API route is going to be called right here and then essentially just make a write to the database. So let's see what happens. Let's click on this button right here, make request, and let's see what happens on the server. So, okay, for the database, we can see the time it took for this write to happen was 388.275 milliseconds. And um, I haven't tried this out for any other database than MongoDB yet, so I'm used to this value. However, interestingly enough, if we do this again, right, I'm gonna click make request again. As you can see right here in the logs, it takes way shorter. So there is a kind of cold start here, um, probably because when it sees that the object already exists, it sees that it doesn't need to create a new instance of it and thereby it's probably faster, but that could be totally wrong because I'm not a database expert. I just found this interesting. Um, when I click the button a bunch of times, this is way, way shorter than the initial 388 milliseconds it took. And now, how about we try another database? So let's try the SQL one. Uh, I am gonna write these values down. So let's say MongoDB. Now this is probably gonna be really small for you. So let me zoom in. MongoDB is gonna be 388.275 milliseconds. And let's try the SQL. So let me copy the database SQL. And all we need to do is paste it right here because now we're using the different database connection string to a completely different database. Let's push that into our database, yarn prisma db push. And pushing that schema into our database and we get an error. The URL must start with protocol Mongo. Okay, so we also need to configure that we are now using MySQL and that also means that the ID is going to be generated differently. NoSQL is kind of known for being fast and NoSQL took us um, 388.275 milliseconds. So I am expecting that this will take longer, but let's see. Let's click the make request button right here. There we go. And let's see what happens on the server. Oh, um, and I didn't even start the server. Okay, well, uh, yeah, yeah, I, I know, there is an error, I know, I know. Okay, let's refresh the page and now we should be able to make that request and let's see what happened on the server. Interesting, so the database for the SQL took 255.375 milliseconds and remember, in the database, it's completely new. Nothing was ever done in the database. I've created them from scratch. So if you see here, this is the MongoDB database. You can see the read and writes um, I've been doing in the Mongo one, then the SQL one. Now, if I were to refresh this, you should be able to see that we have one write or one read. Uh, we don't, but I don't think it really matters. And then, oh, I forgot to show you, we also have the CockroachDB one, which is gonna be our um, Postgres one. So interesting, this SQL was faster, SQL, I, but uh, I can still push the button a bunch of times. And interestingly enough, the initial one was uh, faster. So there's a, uh, a faster cold start. However, 
the subsequent ones are actually slower. These values are about 50% slower than the MongoDB ones. So MongoDB is actually faster if you neglect the cold start. That is interesting. And now let's try the Postgres, how that compares to those two. So for Postgres, we just need to paste in the database URL. Let's start up the server, yarn dev, and then click the button one more time, make request. And let's see what happened. Okay, so this is 244.198 milliseconds. Let's say Postgres 244.198. And then let's take a look at these subsequent ones. So I'm gonna press a bit more often. Okay, so these actually compare to the MongoDB values. So it seems like SQL is the slowest, um, even though with a cold start, it was the fastest and MongoDB by far the slowest. Um, however, what I think counts are these subsequent ones. And we can also try doing some reads, right? Right here, these are all writes, but we can say um, prisma.idc.find first. And then we want to find by, actually, we need to insert the where, where, that's how we search with Prisma, and then we can look for the ID. Now to determine what the ID should be, we can look into our database. And if you take a look, well, okay. So let's restart the Prisma Studio, Yarn Prisma Studio. It's gonna rerun everything and put us into our studio. And as we can see here, we've created a bunch of IDC um, objects in our database. So we can just copy the idea of one that we're going to search for, insert it here, and that needs to be a string like that. And now we are making a read request to the database and logging that time. Now let's do it for Postgres first. So the last one we did the writing for, it's going to be the first one we're making the reads for. And let's do the requests. Okay, so the first one was a cold start as well. So let's have the reads and then post Postgres, it's gonna be initial, and then you know the average is gonna be like I think 15 because we're between 13 and 16. So let's just say 15.3 milliseconds for Postgres. Now let's try SQL. Um, we just need to paste it in here. Okay, I've done everything we need to do. Um, this is the SQL server, this is the SQL database. We can just grab one of these IDs. The length of the object is very much comparable, so we don't need to worry about that. And now we can perform the read for this ID right here. As you can see, the ID does look very different than the uh, Postgres one because we changed the generator for the ID, but not that it really matters. So let's try pushing the button, make request. And as you can see, the first read in the MySQL took 144 milliseconds, so it is faster than Postgres, SQL. Um, let's have the initial and then also the subsequent ones. So make request, and these are, they're pretty much the same. That's crazy. So thing is, when I really spam this, oh, I thought it would go down when I really spammed the button, but apparently it doesn't. So it is very much comparable to Postgres, but maybe a bit more. Nah, let's just, let's just take this value. As I said, like this is not highly mathematical. You know, I'm just a dude seeing which, which database is the fastest. And let's now try MongoDB. And I think MongoDB is actually gonna be the fastest because it is no SQL. So if we give, give this a fair shot, because every time we restarted the server, now the first value that we're gonna make the request to is probably gonna be very realistic. So let's make the request. And okay, yeah, that's more realistic. That's um, 227 milliseconds now. Okay, so never mind. This wasn't the actual time. So that is actually slower than SQL and Postgres. Now let's try the subsequent ones. So let me spam the button a bit. And as you can see, there is a bunch of variety in what we're getting. So one very high value, but some very low ones as well. So I guess it's a fair shot to just assume that it's like around the 12 to 13 milliseconds, even though there are some um, outliers, obviously. But I think it definitely compares to um, Postgres and MySQL in that regard. So let's use the 16.7 milliseconds as a reference for NoSQL. And now, in final comparison, which one is the fastest? Well, it seems like SQL definitely for the initial, and then for the subsequent, there is not a huge difference. 
to be honest, neither in the reads nor in the writes. And now what I find really surprising is this result from um, for NoSQL. I expected MongoDB to be better than Postgres or SQL, or at least faster, not just better in general, but faster for reads and writes, but it wasn't. So that's very interesting, even though all were hosted in Frankfurt and um, all were hosted, you know, just in the cloud with their free tier, uh, surprising results. I really expected MongoDB to come out on top here because of its no SQL infrastructure. It didn't, not for the initial read or write and neither for the subsequent requests, which I really didn't expect. And in some parts, SQL was the fastest, which I really did not think. That was really interesting. I hope you enjoyed experimenting with me. If you enjoyed it, you can subscribe to the channel. I'll see you in the next video. Have a good one and bye bye.